In the early hours of the 15th of April 1912, RMS Titanic sank in the North Atlantic Ocean. She had struck an iceberg only two hours and 40 minutes before she sank, with the loss of around 1,500 lives. The Titanic captured imaginations from the very start, the first film being produced about the tragedy only weeks after it had occurred. She was luxurious. She was the biggest man-made moving object at the time. It was her maiden voyage. She had everyone from every uh, section of society on board, from aristocracy down to uh, a lady fleeing a abusive marriage. There were people going over to America to start new lives. This was a time capsule of sort of an Anglo-British, uh, sorry, American-British um, society of 1912. She was not the only sinking of a passenger ship with huge casualties and she didn't have the same political uh, ramifications as did the uh, the sinking of the Lusitania um, a few years later but she was the first and perhaps that is why she became immediately part of our collective conscious and remains so. Had Titanic survived her maiden voyage, we probably wouldn't have even known about her name nowadays or that of the White Star Line company who built her. And it is the fact that she has captured uh, our imagination from the very beginning that there are so many stories that have been told about her, so many films that have been created, which helps to keep her in our imaginations and in our minds. So there is plenty of information out there. I'm going to recommend some um, information below in the um, in my sources and further reading section in the show notes and also link you to a video done by Gareth Russell recently. He has got a fab just a fantastic book about Titanic in which he looks at all really the stories that have come out about the Titanic over the years and looks into them whilst also effortlessly telling us the story uh, really of what 1912 society was like um, and uh, through the through the people on board. It's a, it's a fabulous book, I thoroughly recommend it. Now there are many myths, legends and ideas around the Titanic and why it was such a huge tra uh, tragedy, how it happened, how, how did so many people die? Around 1500 people died with the ship, 721 being saved on the lifeboats. So it's lifeboats that I've chosen to talk to you about today because this was the most interesting part of the book for me, I think. And there are a couple of elements to talk about with when we when we think about the lifeboats. The first one is the time scale. It took two hours and 20 minutes from the collision with the iceberg to Titanic going under the waves. She had hit the iceberg at 20 to midnight on the 14th of April. This is on the ship's time and she had gone under the waves at 20 past two on the ship's time. So two hours and 40 minutes, an incredibly short amount of time. Titanic had more than the stipulated number of lifeboats that were required at the time. The regulations were woefully inadequate. However, that is not the only thing that we need to look at when we look at the lifeboats. It took 40 minutes for the damage to be assessed and for the decision to be made that the Titanic was in a faith it was a fatal hit and that the Titanic was going to sink and therefore that lifeboats needed to be deployed. I think on dry land and from a distance of over a hundred years we can be a little bit flippant when thinking about how lifeboats should have just been um, deployed. We have the benefit of hindsight. We know that the Titanic was going under the waves. Many people on board on that night didn't believe the Titanic was going to sink. The, uh, the reassurances that this was an unsinkable ship or that she was, you know, she was the safest ship on the waves at the time actually caused issues when it came to trying to evacuate people off the ship because they felt safe on her. She was a big, luxurious ship and people were getting into these lifeboats which were being hoisted down um, and it looked dangerous and there had been uh, 
the, the first boat that went into the water, the, the plug in the bottom hadn't been put back in. They, um, they used to um, have a sort of plug hole, if you like, in the bottom of the boats to stop any rainwater um, pooling in there and, and rotting them. That hadn't been put back in. So the first boat that went into the water had water come up and they had to plug it with clothes. So people had seen that, you know, this getting into lifeboats uh, didn't look that, um, that safe anyway and were willing to take their chances that Titanic was going to remain afloat. Even making jokes about how people would have to get their tickets back out to be able to board again, or we'll see you in the morning for breakfast. Uh, when you when you know when you when you have to come back from your lifeboat and get back on this big safe ship that we're all staying on so it wasn't just that the the number of lifeboats was inadequate for the number of people aboard there was a reticence of people initially to actually get on to the lifeboats then Again, if we refer back to the timescales, 40 minutes to be able to assess the damage and assess that yes, lifeboats needed to be deployed. Another 15 to 20 minutes for the first lifeboat to actually be uh, lowered down. At this time, most of the passengers did not understand the gravity of the situation they were in. In fact, not only the passengers, but the crew as well. Most of them had not been party to the decision to deploy the lifeboats and were unaware of the situation they were going to be finding themselves in very shortly. So it was another sort of 40 to 50 minutes before the majority of people on board were taking it seriously that they needed to get in the lifeboats. By this point, a number of lifeboats had been deployed without full load. The passengers had this had a faith in the Titanic's infallibility. But the sad conclusion is that even had there been more lifeboats, more lives couldn't have been saved just through the sheer time scale being so short between her be, uh, colliding with the uh, iceberg and going under the waves and the amount of time it took to deploy the lifeboats, the amount of time it took to impose on people what threat they were under. They were even trying to free the last two boats as she went under the waves. So had there been more boats, the conclusion is that they wouldn't have been able to be launched anyway. It's a sad story, but it's one that is going to capture the imaginations of people for a long time to come.